Welcome to the second day of Advent of Code. Today our job is to count the validity of passwords according to their policies. That sounds rather abstract. What does it mean? So for example, here you see the password A, B, C, D, E. And the policy is that the letter A must occur at least one time and at most three times. And indeed, it occurs one time. So this is a valid password. Okay, and the second password, the letter B, should occur between one and three times. Uh, it doesn't occur at all, so this would be an invalid password. Okay, and here you can see the beginning of the um, input. It should be um, a thousand passwords in total. Okay, so maybe let's grab uh, the first password here and let's play around with it a bit. So, um, for example, how would we uh, uh, check that this is even valid according to the <laughs> uh, basic syntax? So first uh, some digits, then a hyphen, then more digits, a space, and so on. Uh, we could simply use um, the function rematches. Okay, it expects a regular expression and a string. So as a regular expression, which you can um, detect with this hash in front, we could say, well, first we want a digit, but uh, at least one could be multiple, then a hyphen, then digit, at least one could be multiple, a space, then a word character, a colon, another space, and then at least one word character could be multiple. Okay, and that gives us the input back. And if the input was malformed, let's maybe remove the space, then we would get nil. Okay, uh, all the input is uh, 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 well formed according to this uh, syntax, but we still have to check, of course, the semantics, right? So, and for that, we have to get at the um, constituent parts. How would we do that? We can simply wrap the interesting parts in parents. The, they are called groups in regular expressions. And then you will see that the result is not a single string, but now a vector of strings. Okay, so here's the entire string that was matched. And then you can see the four subgroups. Okay, so how would we now get at the four subgroups? We could simply say, uh, let's use a um, let expression and say, uh, I don't know, let's call it uh, ms for matches. <laughs> and uh, then in the same let expression, we could say, well, uh, min, so the first number should be um, the nth element of ms at index zero, and the max should be the nth element of ms uh, at, oh, I'm sorry, at index one, at index two, because we don't want index number zero. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, and so on. But this is rather hmm, a lot of boilerplate code because this variable ms, its only purpose is then to look at the constituent parts and then the entire variable ms is not really that uh, interesting to us anymore. We don't really care about this entire vector. We want to get at the parts as uh, effective as possible. Okay, so there's another syntax. We can say instead of binding uh, the result of rematches to a single variable, we can destructure the resulting vector. Um, the first element, maybe let's do it like this. The first element is not interesting to us, so we simply ignore it by convention. Um, I could simply write anything here, but the convention is to say the underscore stands for I don't really care about that result. Then we have the min, then the max, then the character, and then the password. And maybe let's align those guys to better reflect where those values come from, like this. Okay, and um, right, then we don't need all the rest anymore, right? That should give us um, already all those parts. Maybe let's quickly check with the password. Do we get uh, at the password if we um, evaluate this expression? And indeed we do, right? And we could get at ch. That would be this guy, a string instead of a character, and uh, min and max are also uh, still strings, right? Because uh, looking at regular expressions, you'll always get strings. Okay, so now we would like to return all those uh, four results. <clears throat> let's use a, a map for that purpose. So let's say min should be min, max should be max, ch should be ch, and password should be password. Okay, 
And then we are almost done. I would like these two strings to be numbers instead. So let's wrap them in a call to integer parse int for min oops and for max. Okay, now they are ints and uh, the p should be a character. We could do that by simply calling nth of ch at index zero and there we go. Okay, so that's already quite useful code that we wrote here. So let's wrap that into a function. Um, let's call it parse line <laughs> for lack of a better term and then replace, uh, sorry, this example with our line. Now we have a nice little function <clears throat> and then let's test it with the line from before and it still works. Okay, cool. So maybe let's now uh, look at the real lines again. You could see them here and inspired by the solution to uh, yesterday's problem, let's write a um, function, maybe let's call it read database. Okay, and let's use the with open macro again. So the reader should be IO reader of file name like this. And then what do we want to do with the with the reader, we want a lazy sequence of lines, then we want to map our pass line function over it. Okay, so in theory, now we should get um, <clears throat> a thousand of those maps. Okay, so let's see if that works. Read database and our file name is here. Okay, let's see if that works. And we get a classic exception. So <clears throat> map gives us a lazy sequence so uh, and line seek as well. So nothing in the file is being read while we're in the read database function. And then when we leave the scope of with open, the file is closed. And now here the wrapper tries to uh, print the lazy sequence, hence starting the actual read from the file. And of course that doesn't work because the stream is already closed. So we have to return a, um, an eager collection, for example, a vector seems like a good choice and that works. Uh, alternatively, you could pass a uh, continuation function into the read database file and say, how would you like to process all those lines? But I think for now, this is a simpler solution. Okay, so this is uh, the lazy sequence that we want. This is another temporary lazy sequence that we're not really interested in because we immediately uh, turn it into a vector. Um, so there's a special variant of map that basically fuses these two lines and it's called map v, so map into a vector. Then we get rid um, of the second lazy sequence. We get the same result, but it's more um, efficient if you want an eager collection anyway in the end. Okay, cool. Um, now, maybe let's try to implement the, the check for validity next. So let's say <clears throat> valid password with a, with a trailing question mark. That means uh, this is a naming convention that this returns a Boolean, so it's a, it's a predicate. And then we get some uh, database entry. And then again, we would start uh, picking that entry um, apart, right? So we would say min should be uh, the min inside the entry map, max should be the max inside the entry map and so on. Um, <clears throat> and similar to, uh, to the let binding above where we said, well, we don't just want one variable containing the entire thing. We can use destructuring and parameter list as well. So I could say I want an associative destructuring and min should be uh, the min, max should be the max um, and so on. And again, this is rather wasteful because we repeat uh, the same name twice every time. The only difference is the leading colon. So um, there's a better version that says um, use the keys uh, min, max, ch and password. And then we get bindings for those variables uh, fetched from the corresponding or with the corresponding keywords from the map. Okay, so I don't even need uh, this let binding here anymore. 
Okay, so when is it a valid password? So first we have to count, maybe let's call it uh, times, how often ch occurs in password. And there's uh, lots of possible uh, approaches there. Maybe let's do a simple approach. Let's say we start with a password and then we want to filter all the elements or all the characters that are equal to um, ch, right? Okay, and then um, we want to count how many of those were left. Um, that's great. And then we can see if the times result uh, lies between min and max inclusive. And we do that by simply saying min times max uh, smaller than or equal to. So this is not just a special binary operator. This is a, um, a variadic function. You can call it with one argument or two arguments or uh, an arbitrary number of arguments. Okay, cool. Um, right, so that should be our um, password validity check. Now, um, maybe let's use my favorite <laughs> macro again, like this. So here's again our database. So we have a vector of entries and we want to filter for those that are valid. So that would be filter valid password. Okay, now we have a lazy sequence that's probably smaller. Maybe let's first count how many we have in total. Yeah, we have a thousand entries and if we filter for the valid password, then 572 are left uh, for my um, special input. So every participant gets its own input. So 572 is probably not the right answer for you. <laughs> okay, cool, yeah. So I suspect that uh, this could be done in a more interesting way, maybe with regular expressions or something, uh, let me know in the comment section below if you found um, a different approach there. Okay, so that's the first part of the puzzle. The second part is a reinterpretation of those two numbers. So they're no longer uh, bounds for a number of occurrence, but now they are indices. And they say that the letter A must occur either at position one or at position three. And in this case, indeed, it occurs at position one because we start counting at one here and not at zero. Okay, um, right, no, where in, in this case B occurs neither in those positions and uh, here C occurs in both positions. So that's also invalid. It must occur in exactly one of those positions. Okay, so maybe let's simply copy our valid password predicate and um, let's change it. So what do we want to do? Let's see, let's start from the bottom. So how would we look at the uh, character at position min? We use our nth function again at password at index min. And we would like to know if this is equal to our ch. We can do it like this. And we have to do the same thing for the second position. And then we want to know if exactly one of those results returns true, right? We want an exclusive or basically, but exclusive or doesn't exist in closure as far as I know. But if you think about it hard enough, exclusive or is really the same as not equal, right? If you want exactly one true value and exactly one false value, those values are not equal, no matter in which order they occur. So I can simply say not equal and um, then I get um, oh, I don't think I did this right. Oh, or maybe I did. <laughs> okay, that's what I wanted to happen. Okay, right, so this should almost be good. Let's see if we test this. Yeah, we get a string index out of bounds exception because of course I forgot to <laughs> decrement the index. So uh, logically we have one based indices, but of course in closure we have zero based indices, right? Okay, and then I get 306, and that was the correct solution in my case. Okay, so that was uh, quite a step up from the previous puzzle, maybe a quick um, recap. So what are the interesting parts here? I think in this function, the interesting part is the destructuring in the let binding, and of course the um, uh, deconstruction of the regex basically, if you will, right? You have to use those parents to define the groups, and then uh, with destructuring, you get at the parts in a very effective manner. Just don't forget the underscore for the entire result, which we aren't interested in. And the rest is just normal function calls and a map literal. 
Okay, here the interesting part was we have to return an eager collection because we want to read from the file within the read database function, uh, especially within the with open macro. Otherwise, we get a stream closed error. And then in the valid password predicate function, the interesting part was the associative destructuring, where you simply say keys and then mention the keys uh, inside a vector. And then you can pick apart the map very easily. And, and the from an API perspective, that's also nice because now the caller knows uh, which keys he is expected to pass in in the map. Okay. Cool. Then I find this uh, quite interesting that you can pass an arbitrary number of arguments to this uh, function. <laughs> there are no operators in closure. They're just functions with weird names. You can see it's just a function. Um, okay, this was just basic stuff, nothing interesting. And um, here again, the same destruction, we copy pasted it. And um, yeah, the fact that exclusive or is simply um, not equals. Okay, cool. So let me know if you have any uh, suggestions and I'll see you for day three, hopefully.